AMD's X570 chipset marks the arrival of some technology that was first deployed on Epic, although that was done through the CPU, as there isn't a traditional chipset. With the shift to PCIe 4, X570 motherboards have grown more complex than X370 and X470, furthered by difficulties cooling the higher power consumption X570 chipset. All these changes mean that it's time to compare the differences between X370, 470, and 570 motherboard chipsets, hopefully helping newcomers to rise and understand the differences along the way. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-Lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. This video is only focusing on the differences in the chipset, so that's gonna be I.O. It's entirely I.O., a little bit of power consumption, but what we're not talking about is compatibility between the CPUs and the chipsets or the motherboards. Technically, you, you, they are all kind of cross-compatible, but there's some caveats there, like losing PCIe Gen 4 on the older boards, and you will be disabling PCIe Gen 4 as a toggle in the new Agisa updates coming up. Motherboard manufacturers could theoretically overcome that if they were willing to dig through the binary and figure out which toggle to flip uh, to true instead of false. But that stuff we're not really going to get into here. What we're focusing on is I.O. and power. We'll start with power. So chipset average power before getting into I.O. is measured at about 11 watts on the X570 chipset. This is information direct from AMD at their editor's uh, tech day. Board partners have told us that the peak chipset power consumption they've seen is around 14 watts. And some board partners have also told us that they've seen up to 15 watts, which could be an early alpha version of the chipset. But officially from AMD, we've been told 11 watts average and 14 watts peak. Although that may change going forward, depending on how AMD updates its, its firmware uh, microcode and things like that. So at present, the chipset doesn't downclock during loads. Uh, what it does is it sits there burning at a higher power consumption than the older chipsets, which were about 5.8 watts. And that means you have an active chipset fan on almost every motherboard. Some of them can get away without it with enough heat sink mass and service area, but most of them will have a fan because it does burn uh, closer to the 11 watt number constantly. X570 has been Andy's biggest challenge with Ryzen 3000 launch. It has caused the delay of the launch at least once, as far as we're aware. And the difficulty seemed to stem from the added complexity and power consumption requirements of PCIe Gen 4. But now that those have been, for the most part, conquered, other than the higher power consumption issues, uh, the chipset is shaping up to have a significant amount more I.O. capabilities than the old ones. So we'll talk about that next. Let's get into the specs. The Ryzen 3000 CPUs have 24 total PCIe lanes. Four of those are general purpose or NVMe SSD lanes. So you get four by Gen 4 straight to the CPU for SSDs with 16 used for PCIe graphics lanes. The remaining four lanes go straight to the chipset and allow more bandwidth for chipset to CPU transactions. The CPU further supports four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections and a pick one choice of either one by four NVMe or 1x2 NVMe with two SATA ports extra. The chipset has 20 PCIe lanes, 16 of which are assignable for I.O. Motherboard manufacturers have some limited level of freedom to assign lanes between devices, like PCIe slots, SATA, USB high-speed devices, or high-speed networking, depending on the goals of the motherboard. Eight of X570's lanes are always PCIe. The other eight can be mucked down for things like SATA, or those other devices. And as a reminder, your graphics lanes typically come straight from the CPU, which has 16 allocated for PCIe 4 in the actual PCIe slots. The X570 chipset also supports four USB 2.0 ports, eight USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and two sets of a pick one choice of either a single use of four PCIe Gen 4 lanes, dual device use on a by two configuration of PCIe Gen 4 each, or four SATA six gigabit per second lanes. This is going to be where the motherboard manufacturers make some decisions on where to allocate lanes to different slots or ports. And finally, the chipset natively supports four SATA three ports, which can be increased by burning one of the pick one choices on an additional four or by using an external controller, although that would reach levels where you probably don't need that many. Here's a chart comparing X570 versus the previous generation. 
The biggest change is obviously Gen 4. All the PCIe lanes on X570 are Gen 4, whereas that didn't exist on desktop platforms previously. The X470 and X370 chipsets were actually the same as each other, with the only real difference being major upfits to motherboard BIOS by the manufacturers. X470 motherboards generally solved a lot of X370's memory issues that were early in the life of Ryzen, and that was more BIOS side or trace routing than anything. X470 was more of the demarcation of that BIOS upfit, not an actual chipset change. The asterisks in this table indicate places where numbers could change based upon the pick one option used by the manufacturers. Lanes can be assigned elsewhere as needed uh, within the limitations of the X570 chipset. The other major change is the move to support 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports up to 8 natively. As always, motherboard makers can expand support for some of these items by adding third-party controllers on the board, but this is rarely done as cost and complexity increase, and also it starts to become unnecessary. Power consumption is something we discussed earlier in this video, but it's also the last thing to mention. For points of reference, if you're wondering, well, what does 11 to 14 watts really mean, the X470 and X370 chipsets were about 5.8 watts, so it's a pretty significant increase. It's enough of one where most of the boards will need a small chipset fan or just a massive heatsink on them. For Ryzen 3000, the I.O. die on Ryzen 3000 packages is 12 nanometers, the I.O. die on the X570 chipset is 14 nanometers, and the CPU dies are 7 nanometers. This split allows AMD cost savings on dies that don't show enough gains to justify the 7 nanometer fab cost, because where there, while there can be gains, it's not necessarily actually worth it once the testing comes out and shows the differences. So that's a clever way for AMD to save on cost by mixing and matching the fabrication process. And that'll wrap the chipset differences. It's really pretty easy. Some of the I.O. changes, but mostly PCIe Gen 2 general purpose lanes become PCIe Gen 4 general purpose lanes, and those can be assigned to all sorts of things on the board as shown in some of the diagrams and the, the tables we showed earlier. And overall, uh, it's a difference in the capabilities of the chipset from an I.O. standpoint, but keep in mind that your CPU has to support PCIe Gen 4 if you do want to take advantage of it. Your motherboard has to support it, of course, and in terms of putting a new CPU in an older socket, don't expect it to work with the upcoming AGISA updates from AMD. That's sort of the underlying code that gets used in all the, uh, all the firmware. So that could change, but the motherboard vendors would have to dig through binary. It's, pre it's not presented as source code, uh, and that means that it might be a while before someone reverse engineers it, but we'll see. Uh, the biggest thing, though, is just make sure that PCIe Gen 4 support. It's a Ryzen 3000 series for that. The APUs, although being demarcated as 3000, are not using the Zen 2 architecture, so keep that in mind as well if you're buying an APU. But that'll cover us for this one. We will talk about the lower end chipsets as they come out. The B series is not launching for July 7th launch of the new Zen parts. It'll be coming later. We're not sure exactly when, but it will be significantly later from what the motherboard vendors have told us, but that's venturing into rumor land, so we'll kind of leave that there because we don't actually firmly know. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out directly. We'll see you all next time.